Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. We are excited to bring you this new series of us taking older YouTube videos, cutting them down to more manageable pieces where the idea is we can take highlights of testing methods and procedures that can be applied to all cars across the board. And of course, we'll bring you the fix too. Enjoy this video. Okay, what I wanna to show today is how to do a crank sensor test. I have my voltmeter positive lead going to each of these Hall Effect wires individually. And the voltmeter negative lead is connected to battery negative for all of these tests. On this particular design, the power feed is the five volt reference circuit, which is also the feed for all the other sensors. So this is a shared reference, shared power feed for this crank sensor. That's what we're looking at first. When you check the feed voltage on a Hall Effect, the first thing you wanna remember is that it should be steady five all the time, as you can see in this picture. This is not good enough of a test. You always want to do loaded circuit tests and make sure you're not dropping this five volts out on a crank. There's nothing wrong with this vehicle. Uh, I've disabled the ASD relay so the car doesn't start. Typically when you're checking a crank sensor, you're doing it in a cranking condition for a no start, and that's what we've done. We've simulated that. So go ahead and crank it. We want to make sure that our five volts stays at five volts. Go ahead, crank it. Okay, good. That is a good feed. That's the way you check the, the power feed to a Hall Effect. Do it while you're cranking, load the circuit, make sure voltage doesn't drop. As you saw, it stayed at five volts. So in the sensor ground circuit now, and this is gonna be a ground to ground voltage drop test. You see we have nine millivolts, that's good. What we look for generally is uh, less than 100 millivolts on a sensor ground. One of the things you wanna understand though when you do sensor ground testing, if you're doing a cranking condition test, that you are going to have higher voltage during a crank than you will with the engine running or with just the key on engine off. And that's because the starter draws a huge amount of current flow and it loads the block with a lot of current and a lot of energy, and you're gonna see actually when we crank this, an initial spike, which is actually that initial surge of current from the starter, loading the block. So I'm okay with two, 300 millivolts on an initial crank. Um, so go ahead and do it, watch it. Keep cranking. Okay, so we had 190 millivolts, and I told you you wanna see 100 millivolts or less. That number, again, 100 millivolts or less, that's gener generally gonna be with the engine running, you wanna see that kind of number, or with the key on engine off. A cranking condition, I'm okay with a little bit higher voltage. Again, that's block voltage is actually elevated from the high amperage of the starter, so that is a good sensor ground during a crank situation. In fact, what we'll do is I'll, pull, I'll plug this relay back in so you see a running, engine running number. Go ahead and start it. You see it, the engine running. Got seven millivolts, eight millivolts, engine running. That is a good sensor ground. Okay, go ahead, shut it off. Turn the key back on. With the key on or with the engine running, we have that number less than 100 millivolts on a sensor ground. Engine cranking, it can be a little higher. That's how you do a power and ground test on a Hall Effect. On this design only, five volt power. There are others that are out there that are 12 volt. There's other ones that are 10 volt. You need to know the system you're working on. That was the power and ground test. We're gonna focus on the signal circuit next. And I'm gonna show you a couple different things here. First thing we're gonna show, what this looks like cranking. Go ahead and crank it. Keep cranking, keep cranking. All right, what we saw was around 400 to 600 millivolts. And the thing about this sensor is this is a zero to five volt square wave. So I'm showing you the limitations of the voltmeter here. When you're looking at an on-off signal, what's it gonna read is gonna be unique to the characteristics of that signal. And so if it's low longer than it is high, it's gonna have a lower average. If it's high longer than it is low, it's gonna have a higher average. This is a zero to five volt square wave with an average reading of around 500 millivolts cranking. What you can try to do depends on the meter that you're using is use a min-max scale to try to catch that. And let's see if this meter will do it. Let's try it again, go ahead and crank it. All right, so I saw a maximum of 500. 
and a minimum of 0.048, that is certainly not catching the 0 0.5 volt square wave, is it? We're looking at an average, I have a meter that the min-max scale is not even fast enough to pick it up. So what we can do in a situation like that, when you're dealing with signals like this, that are on-off square waves, if you want to see the full amplitude of the square wave, bump the key, and what we'll do is we'll get those Hall Effect uh, windows, the shutters, in different positions, and we should be able to catch this in a high position and a low position. Go ahead and bump the key. Do it again. Again. There it is, right there. Uh, it was just about getting that window for that Hall Effect in the right position so you could see that high-low scale. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay, so what's the maximum number this Hall Effect is producing? It's 5 volts. The minimum number you saw was like 0.04. And there's your high-low signal. This is what you would do with a voltmeter. Uh, with the engine running, it's going to be the same thing. You're not going to see the high-low signal, so I'll show you what it looks like with the engine running. All right, go ahead and, and uh, start it up. I just put the ASD relay back in. Go ahead, start it. Same signal, crank sensor, engine running. This is a zero to five volt square wave. Average of 350 millivolts. That's pretty tough to do with a voltmeter, isn't it? Go ahead, shut it off. Again, if you were doing something like this and you had a no start and you had a crank sensor trouble code, the procedures I just showed with this voltmeter you would follow. Check your power, check your ground. You need to know what your power feed is. Check your ground, check your signal to see full amplitude of a signal that's on off, very fast signal with an average reading voltmeter, you need to slow the crankshaft down. And that's what we did by bumping the key is we got those windows on that flywheel to be in different positions and we were trying to catch the signal with one of those blades in between we were able to catch it that would be a good crank sensor signal so I'm going to show you what it looks like on the scope now which is absolutely the best way to do it okay so we had 500 millivolt average again cranking on the voltmeter and you see our square waves those are zero to five volt square waves and you can understand the design now guys that the reason the average is so low with a zero to five volt square wave is look how much longer of a period of time that that signal is low compared to it is high so if you were to average this which is what your voltmeter does your average is not going to be two and a half volts even though it's a zero five volt square wave because the the high portion is so much smaller than the low portion that your average is going to be very very near ground voltage and that's what we're looking at so that's your crank sensor signal cranking this is a hall effect on a scope obviously the scope is the way to go okay while we're here working on this Jeep talking about hall effects and checking them I wanted to do the cam sensor too so I'm, I'm on the cam sensor now I'm not going to show you the power and ground same power and ground as the crank sensor Let's take a look at our average reading to the left on the voltmeter and we'll look at the scope at the same time to the right. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. What you noticed on this test was we actually saw the high-low signal, didn't we? On both the scope and the voltmeter. Why is that? Why did we see the high-low voltage on the scope and on the voltmeter is because this signal is a very low frequency signal as opposed to the crank sensor which is a much higher frequency signal this one is only one pulse for every two crankshaft rotations is that giving my digital voltmeter enough time to take an updated sample of that signal and so with low frequency switches you can actually pick it up on a digital voltmeter you saw it on the scope you saw it on a digital voltmeter. The differences between a high frequency and low frequency signal, pretty evident here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the highlights of this case study. If you have any questions about the testing methods being shown, or you'd like to learn more about my process, click on the link in the description for the full length video. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And more importantly, make sure you click on that bell icon to get notifications of all new uploads.